Today we're going to talk about uh, making liner locks using a hardened drill template. We've got two different sizes. If you've never made a liner lock or struggled with them, uh, we're going to make it real easy for you. So stick around and let's make some liner locks. So just a bit of introduction. These uh, are hardened 440C. The geometry's been done. I worked that up on CAD software. So the lockup geometry is done. It's got the holes all lined up. We've got two different sizes and that's here's the small size and here's the large size and this is pretty large knife. Both of these. We're going to work on the large size today so it's a little bit easier to see in the videos and we can scale it accordingly. So Pretty simple on these. Let's take a quick look at the materials we're using besides the templates that we've got here. We have some uh, 1 8 CPM S35VN and uh, you can use anywhere from 100 thou to uh, 150, 530 seconds. You can go up to a 3 16 on this design. It, it's, you just change some of your other parts. Pretty simple. The titanium that we're going to use for liners is uh, 070. We've got just some black canvas, uh, 1 8 or that looks like uh, 3 16 Then we've got uh, some black and gray G10 layered, and we'll use that in the spacer bars back here. So there's that. Now the parts are pretty simple. We've got clips, and uh, we'll put one of those on. Here you can see some different examples of different clips that are on these. There's carbon fiber, there's a, a lower one. We're going to use a three-part pivot system. This is basically a barrel pivot and two disc heads. Now the disc heads, these are pretty plain and they're made to modify so you can dome them, chamfer them, do whatever you want that way. Just a few half inch long 256 screws we'll be using uh, 256 all the way through it. When they stop pin the, the parts list is pretty simple. We're going to use a two millimeter detent ball and these are ceramic and we'll show you how to press those in and how to drill for them. Our washers are going to be uh, 15 thou thick so that's the parts list plus of course the templates. So we'll get started on this. Basically the process is uh, put some layout fluid on your metal, clamp that on uh, using a vice grip, and we'll scribe that around. So we've got a line scribed in there, and we will rough cut it out, and then we'll grind right up to the outside of that scribe line. Titanium gets this nasty burr. The thicker the titanium, the more aggressive the burr. 
Occasionally you're going to have to stop and just knock that off. It's no big deal. It's just the, the nature of titanium. They can run it flat or on the disc, but we'll be deburring 20, 30 times during the whole process, maybe 50. So as you develop a burr, and this one interferes with grabbing onto the side of the table, I'm knocking that flat. Now this is a really aggressive belt. I think it's a 36. And I don't want to clean up a bunch of scratches later, so I'm going to be trying to be careful and not gouge that like I apparently did there. I'll have to clean that up now. But uh, that burr, you're just going to want to take off every now and then. So we've got these profiled out. I left a little all around the edges, but ground up to that scribe line. Between the thickness of the scribe line staying outside of that, it's going to be oversized a little bit, and that's just what we want. So now I've got it lined up. And uh, if you don't like the profile of this blade, and I don't necessarily care for it myself, you can modify this, and it won't affect anything. And we will probably modify this profile to look more like a clip point, something on that order. Uh, this was designed so you would have some extra space, some extra meat on there to change the profile to what you want. So that's clamped in. Now this is, uh, we're going to use a um, 3 16 on this. And this hole is, in the template, is reamed to 3 16. And uh, so we've got that in there. Now when you drill uh, a pivot hole or a critical hole, you drill undersize and then you ream to size. In this case, uh, when you're drilling a 3 16 hole, you want to be uh, anywhere from 5 to 15 thou undersize. If you get much, if you drill the exact size and then ream, you're not going to get anything. You're going to get a cloverleaf hole and it won't be right. If you drill too close to the ream size, uh, the reaming doesn't quite work. So for a 3 16 to about a quarter inch hole, say 10 thou under. And we're going to start. Um, so when we drill, this template is 3 16 We're going to start and just get a, a starting point there, and the template will act as a drill guide so you get it exactly right. We're only going to mark the hole and get it started with a 3 16 so it doesn't wobble around in the hole. Then we'll come back and we'll drill through a number 15 wire drill. We'll take this off, we'll drill there, and then we'll come and ream with our 3 16 I've set this board up right here with all of my frequently used drill bits, screwdrivers, all of that. I got tired of looking for tools. Um, this saves an unbelievable amount of time if you can have the discipline to get your tools and drill bits back in there and that kind of works. So let's go over to the drill bits. Those are the 3 16 This is a number 15. This is Tapmatic wax and I use it just about on every hole. And it just self-centers. That bit is bad. Here. 49's all the way around. Uh, one eighth on each end of the lock bar cut. 49. We're going to be using a two millimeter detent ball, so we'll uh, use a 39 there. 
that's labeled 316 we'll start it and then uh, we'll, we'll uh, just sit, locate it then we'll switch to a number 15 and drill that through remit to 316 now 49 uh, is the tap size for 256 actually number 50 is um, but uh, these patterns were made with the number 49 so you can um, uh, drill and tap if you're going to use stainless instead of tie you can and 49 would be the right size for the uh, titanium that we're going to tap we're going to actually uh, drill these 49 because that's all the template size will allow then we'll come back and enlarge those to a number 48 it's just easier to tap with a 48 in titanium especially when we're getting up into 70 thou uh, or bigger so we're all set up there's plenty of outline we left a we left a, a little meat all the way around and we'll clean that up later on as we match the two liners and get them put together now this is the lock bar side so we're going to drill everything and um, that slot with that lock bar cut we'll come back and take care of that later we've got a couple different ways to to do that it's fairly easy and uh, painless uh, but for now we'll get this one drilled and then uh, for the face side the face side lock side the face side we don't need uh, the detent hole or that lock bar there now this is actually going to be our stop pin up here and so that goes to a 1 8 and again these are all going to go to a 48 uh, when we're done so first one we'll do the lock side we'll drill everything and uh, then we'll come back and we'll do the face side Just locate that. Smaller the drill bit, the faster the RPM when you're drilling. I have this set at around 1200 RPM just because it's easiest that way. Hear it squeaking, change the pressure, change the RPM, pull it out, put some lube on there. Pull it back, give your flutes a chance to clear. So that's the detent. Now we get the scales. Titanium expands quite a bit when it's hot and when you're drilling and so you want to use a sharp drill bit otherwise the titanium squeezes the drill bit and creates problems keep your drill bit cool keep a good steady pressure going through titanium so it doesn't heat up too much expand and cause you problems grabbing the bit you kind of peck drill so you're breaking the chip you don't want a big long swarp chip getting in your way and cut you This is the face side. We actually are going to drill these holes, and these are going to be tapped. And on the lock side, we're going to enlarge these to through holes. So those will actually go to a 43, and then these will go to a 48. But the way this is set up, we're going to start with a 49, so we have that flexibility. I'm getting on there it's rocking we want perpendicular holes so as I bring the drill bit down I just kind of release it a little bit let the drill bit pressure flatten out the piece against the one two three block that way I get a more perpendicular hole and again titanium just creates these hideous burrs so as you're doing and drilling your holes that are side by side, be aware that there could be a, just a massive burr right there and, and tilting your work. So take that into account when you're getting that flush on your drill table. So there, just that I had started that hole and I'm gonna let the machine, the drill bit, find center and it'll bring it in and we're perfectly in the center. Reamer should run at about half the speed that a uh, 
Drobita does for, this, for the equivalent size. This is a carbide reamer, so carbide you can run two to three times faster than high speed steel, so I don't change the uh, RPMs on the drill at all. Okay, this is the lock bar side again. We've got the holes for the lock bar ends. We'll, we'll uh, cut a, a line there later on. But uh, for now, in this design, we're going to come back uh, from the from the lock bar side with the screws that'll go through the spacer bar and they'll tap into and thread into the face side. So these holes right there, those three holes need to be through holes. And there's they're going to be uh, number 43 or 256 screw. We're going to take those number 49, the remaining number size 49 holes, scale uh, for the spacer bar thread. We're going to take all those to 48 because we're tapping titanium and it's just easier. The titanium is way stronger than the screw threads. You're not going to strip anything out. If it's going to give, the screw threads are going to strip whether you uh, tap with a 48 or 49 hole. We'll need to uh, enlarge the stop pin. We're going to use uh, one eighth on the stop pin, which is located right up there. Uh, piloted as a 49, and now we're going to take it out to a 33 on a one eighth carbide ring. All right, we've got the holes. Uh, drilled and reamed, but they've got just nasty burrs. Okay, I gave all of these just a slight chamfer. I did not chamfer the detent ball hole, so leave that one alone. We're good on that. But all the others, just a light touch. This makes locating the screws easier, assembly, disassembly, and it's just a good habit. Get all the holes drilled and reamed to size. So we'll come back and we'll use that later uh, for another part of the process. But for now, that all went pretty quick. Just cut it out, follow the profile, using these as a template drill guide. You got the holes exactly where you, you need them. Now, here's the deal with making folders. They mess up, you make a mistake, drill the wrong hole, all of that kind of thing, you gotta make a new part. Rather than making one of these from scratch, you simply start over with a new template and you get an exact replacement part, and that will matter to you uh, later on. I would uh, probably not build a folder today without first making drill templates for uh, a folder because you mess up and you, you want a replacement part. So. We're all set here. Now we've got to tap some holes. We've got to tap the scale holes. These are through holes. Again, that's the lock side, so the, screw, the screws will come through and hold it together. On this one, for example, this is the lock side. Back side, the screw holes go back through the back, and they thread invisible into, into this liner under that scale. So this is uh, Ultra Lube. Titanium prefers a sulfur-based tapping fluid. This is not sulfur-based, but it sure works good 
and uh, I've tried sulfur, I've tried a dozen different things. Hand tapping, titanium, it's a real pain. Uh, I've, this is a, uh, a taco brand tapping head. There's Tapmatic uh, out there that uh, has the same thing. This is kind of a clone uh, copy of it, and I've got a 256 in there. Well, how this works is this little lever here has to be held and in practice there's two uh, you mount the uh, the tap in there and then you adjust the clutch mechanism there's a clutch mechanism so it'll tap down it'll tap up you'll hear it uh, as we engage and you set the clutch pressure through trial and error I've touched it I hate it I'd hate to lose my settings here because I've got it dialed in just right where I want it so I'm going to put a little dab of uh, ultra lube on there bring it down and it gets flat you can hear that clutch I'm just going to go back and forth and scrub that thread center it get it in the clutch grabs it takes it down it's that fast. It's unbelievable. Compared to tapping by hand, you can sure do that, but you might consider looking into a tapping head. Uh, there's different sizes on these tapping heads, and this is a zero to quarter inch. It makes just simple work of tapping once you get adjusted. Getting there is kind of a trial. Now, if you do happen to, if you're hand tapping, you break a tap and it gets stuck in there. Sometimes you can shatter them, but uh, in titanium, you can just uh, soak it in uh, an acid bath, ferric chloride solution uh, that you typically use. Same to the strength solution that you would use for Damascus. Put that in there, soak it for a couple hours. It'll attack the tap only. It doesn't hurt the tie. You can get the tap out and you can start over. But um, there we go. We're all tapped. We're all set and uh, ready to move on to the so, next part of it. To recap, we've got these roughed out. They're profiled. They're drilled, they're tapped, they're reamed. So there's that. Same with the blade. Now we're gonna go back to that template that we use for the liners. You don't wanna use your liners because you're gonna wallow out the holes. And we've also threaded these. You don't wanna ever drill through threaded uh, holes. You're just gonna take out your threads. So that's why you have this. Now this process is identical to the liners. We're gonna take this and uh, scribe it, drill it, and uh, now for the lock side, we don't have the, the cut in there, but that's the lock side. Um, we'll put through holes in the back. So if this was the scale for the lock side, uh, we'll profile it. We'll get all the holes drilled. We won't drill a stop hole. We won't drill those holes for the lock bar. And we also won't drill the detent hole. But the pivot hole, the two scales, the through holes for the spacer bar, we will drill. This is a 316 for the pivot hole. And we're not going to ream this because we're actually going to make that just a little bit larger. Uh, as you drill that my Carter G10, it tends to shrink back, so we'll actually come back and enlarge that a little bit. Back to the number 49. Uh, so we got a pivot and two scale holes to drill. face side we just got the two front uh, screw holes for the scales and we're going to take this and and uh, make that slightly larger so a 316 is 185 uh, or 187 rather and we're going to use a number 12 which is a 189 not much i'll just kind of run it around that way a little bit use a bit but it works that will make that pivot slide a lot easier uh, we know this is the lock side because it's got extra holes there. 
We have to enlarge those for through holes. Back to a 43 drill bit. We're on the face scale. We got to enlarge those for a through hole. So I can't emphasize this enough um, to mark your scales, mark your liners, because it's so easy to make a mistake um, and drill the wrong hole. I, I, messed up one of these scales already is trying to rush through it um, but we got that fixed took just a few seconds so I'm, I'm gonna just write on the inside lock put it on the inside there face and that will scrub off several times but that's what it's gonna be so got that lined up I'm gonna write on the inside here lock and same thing there put it on the inside face Got them lined. Smart. So locks to the right, flip it over, it's always to the left. So we've got and got that. Now I'm gonna go to the saw, I'll trim that away, I'll take it to the grinder, I'll profile that up to that scribe line, and we'll have some scales uh, roughed out and ready to finish. See you in a minute. I'm going to take these um, liners, and I just grabbed a couple 3 eighths long 256 screws, and I'm going to fasten these scales onto the liners and grind the screws flush on the back. Now we'll countersink these in a bit, and you could probably save a step, but I just want to show the process to you so you and make your own decisions. This isn't necessarily the best way to put together a folder, but it works best for me. And we'll take it apart and put it together a lot of times. So we get these screws and we'll just grind those flush on the disc grinder. This is using feathering adhesive, and I can change these out. This happens to be a 360. It's pretty worn out, but I, I leave it on there and, and uh, deburr and all that. Now I have a rubber liner in there just to give it a little bit more give. And this is also a one degree uh, flat disc uh, from Beaumont, so it has a one degree convex on there. So if you were to go across, it won't interfere. I'm going to just take these scales back off and set them to the side. We didn't have to do it this second, but we just did it and got it out of the way because it was quick. We could see the parts start to come together. This is a Calavera cutlery, and man, are they nice. It's got uh, different sizes, different colors, and they're just a nice little tool to have. You can use something like these Weha or Bondus, I just prefer those. So we want to look at cutting the lock and we've got a couple different ways to do that. 